Okay guys, let's talk about Marilyn Manson today and I just wanted to confide to you that Marilyn Manson is one of my first inspirations. I've always loved his art, his music and his way of expressing his way to be. Back in the 90s, I watched a video, I was about 12 or 13 and the video was the man that you fear. It was a very weird video for me. I was already into kind of dark industrial uh, music, uh, gothic I should say, uh, although I was just at the beginning of exploring in this brilliant genre. And for me it was such a weird thing, because first of all, the androgyny of the character. Uh, I didn't know whether he was a man or a woman, and obviously he played in this thing. And remember, it was back in the 90s where we didn't really have many ways of finding out whether he was a real man or, or a woman. And also the name of the man was like Marilyn Manson. Marilyn, as far as I remember, was uh, a woman name. But anyway, I got shocked. I loved it since the beginning and I remember going to school the day after talking to my friends about how great this artist was. I didn't know what he was about, how to express it and if he had ever recorded any albums. I just knew that I liked him and that was probably the gateway for me to get into this genre fully. I remember buying the album Antichrist Superstar after a few months and that was absolute <laughs> mayhem because as soon as I put it on my stereo, um, Irresponsible Hate Anthem is the first track and I was like wow, it sounded very extreme to me and I wasn't used to that extreme violence yet, <laughs> so I was shocked. On the other hand, I was this stuff is very cool. So Marilyn Manson, going back to who he is, is an artist born in 1969 in Ohio, US. He moves to Florida back in mid 80s, where he starts a career as a as a musical journalist. He then gets inspired and forms a band in 1989 called Marilyn Manson and the Spooky Kids. Back in 1994, he releases the first album and it's called Portrait of an American Family. An album that by all the critics glorified. It's a proper icon of the era. Songs like Dope Hat, My Monkey, Lunchbox are symbol of something that was growing back in that time. And it's this movement of being really alternative but at the same time being in the mainstream because obviously the character was very known in the mainstream media. For all those people who were feeling a little bit more alternative than anyone else, Marilyn Manson was the answer. Those people who had the misfits, those people who were disenfranchised, those people who felt a little bit different from the norm, then Marilyn Manson was somebody who gave us voice and that was very important to us. That was it. From that day on, I was in love with this world. That became my world. It became part of me. It was part of my life. I remember going to my room, listening to uh, his songs over and over again and being completely immersed in this world of screams, strange lyrics, obviously back in the days I didn't speak English so I didn't know what he was about but I knew that he was extreme, I knew that he was uh, criticizing firmly uh, especially the religion, the Christianity. Especially in the video, very iconic of Antichrist Superstar, the video clip, which is a live version. He starts uh, his 
concert by reading passages of the Bible and then tearing the Bible apart. Obviously, this kind of symbolic act for us teenagers, alternative, I should say, teenagers back in the days were very powerful and evocative. So this is the introduction to my favorite artist of all time. In the next episode, we are going to be talking about his albums. We'll go albums by albums and we'll go through an analysis of what uh, they meant for the period, for the era they were released and how they were created. And what the difference, the differences between the albums are who he worked with and with the producers and all this kind of information that are vital for you to understand what type of character what he meant for all of us teenagers of the second part of the 90s for now bye bye i'll see you next